It is a chronic Hoosier Tuesday. He's with us now. How are you, Ben? How is that knee doing, man? Knee is doing awesome. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I feel like my emotions have been toyed with here this morning. You know, everybody wakes up today, and it's it's New Year in Indiana. It's the official start of the college basketball season. The Mike Woodson era is upon us. Show up at work, man, and I can't do any work. The Internet's down. So I'm thinking, you know, the gods have smiled on us, and uh, we get to just geek out and maybe go get an early start on pregame. But lo and behold, we're connected again, so I guess i got to do something before we head into the gym tonight. I'm so excited, though. That that happened to me this morning, too. Yeah, I guess it was everywhere. It wasn't just me, so that made me feel good. A, a totally unrelated story. I, I was in, I had a meeting with some uh, meeting with a guy last week and I just went into uh, Dagwoods in Bloomington. I bet I hadn't been in there since college. I don't know why, because the sandwich was awesome. I mean, they're, they're not an advertiser, just it, just saying it, it was. But so I we finished and I had a sandwich, but I didn't have a drink. And we get done and he leaves and I go up to get something to drink and I stop, turn around. I'm like, what the hell? Pat Graham just standing there. I'm like, what the hell are you doing here, man? He was eating. He is that had come up to town from Evansville just to get the calendars. He had to come up to get the calendars that the, everyone gives out because he always gives them out. But uh, he drove up by himself just to get the calendars. Uh, and I think that was it. It was just like no big deal. Uh, it just cracked me up. I turn around and there's Pat, a guy that went to my high school. Uh, just it was just odd. Uh, but yeah, he he, he was really. And really, he was very positive about how things are going. Last night, you had Mike Woodson's first show. Uh, tonight is the real first show, Chronic. Uh, the show the show uh, opens up tonight on the Mike Woodson era. It's here, man. It's a new era of Indiana basketball. Coach Mike Woodson uh, back in the hall. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting, as exciting, I think, as I've been and probably since the 12-13 season when Indiana's preseason number one. Um, it just, it's been such a, a great off season. Uh, Zach Osterman wrote about it yesterday, you know, for a hire that was you know, kind of open to a lot of criticism, uh, when it was initially made, um, you know, Woody did pretty much everything he could to win the off season this year for the most part. Um, just saying all the right things, hitting all the right buttons. Uh, you know, obviously that's, that's not uncommon when, when, programs and coaches and fans are still in this honeymoon phase uh but it's it's just been a breath of fresh air uh for the indiana faithful just to hear those words that calm that comfort that he brings to it that knowledge he brings to it and you know you listen to his press conference yesterday talking about where this team is what to expect uh, you know it's he's singing the hymnals that, that we grew up listening to talking about defense and you know it also bringing the breath of fresh air into it, uh, you know, talking about trying to run 10 deep. I don't think we're going to get there just yet. Uh, we still got to get some bodies healthy. Um, but I think the expectation across the board is you're going to see an Indiana team that's going to give their maximum effort. And I know that's a pretty low, uh, low bar to clear to start with, but let's be honest, that's been one of the most common uh, complaints I've heard over the last couple of years is, you know, all too often Indiana just got outworked both ends of the of the floor so excited to uh excited to get the new era started man more than anything i'm just excited to walk into that glorious gym with my wife with both my kids and and just partake in those routines and those rituals those traditions again uh that, that we've enjoyed our entire lives and uh and just get back to that and and that that sense of community that it brings and you know the water cooler talk is already just off the charts today uh, I, I could not be more excited. I'm like a kid at Christmas morning. Well, I bet it's going to be a big uh, uh, early turnout probably with, with all the excitement. Kevin, I think one of the best things that Coach Woodson has brought in uh, in his interviews, when I've spoke with him, when you spoke with him, when he's been on, he he seems to be telling you the truth. He's not trying to sell a bill of goods. He's he's being honest. It, it feels like he's being honest, and and he's not trying to blow smoke and 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 say this is that great. And this he's telling the truth, and 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 it sounds like it. Yeah, and I think he's you know like I said that there, there was a little bit of caution uh, yesterday. I thought in the press conference just in terms of uh, what to expect, and you know maybe some concerns about how the offense is coming along. And, and he talked a lot about sacrifice too, and the importance of that. And, and let's not forget, this has been an offense the previous two years that has been heavily predicated around one guy, Trace Jackson Davis. 
and getting him the ball inside and having him finish inside. And now you're going to a system where um, you want to build around him. You want to build shooters. You want to build the confidence of those shooters. Um, you're going to be playing a lot more pick and roll, a lot more motion in the offense. Um, and in order to do that, you need ball movement. You need crisp ball movement. You need screens. You need rolls. You need all these things working in harmony. And uh, it'll be a process. But, um, you know, as, as we've alluded to before, and Mike alluded to, at least you have the schedule that kind of allows you for that, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the majority of games in November and December uh, being, uh, you know, uh, outside in the non-conference. Um, of, of course, the exceptions being Nebraska, which will be, you know, certainly a, a Big Ten team that's, that's still rebuilding under Fred Hoiberg, and then a uh, Wisconsin team on the road that you don't really know what to expect because they lost a lot last year and they're having some culture problems up there with Greg Gard as well. Yeah, and uh, looking forward to, uh, tonight, no one knows what really to expect, and that's uh, I, Mike Woodson was talking about that, and I, he's honest. He doesn't really know. Now, I, I don't think he – expects a loss and I don't think anyone expects a loss this is not going to be a a game where an Indiana State game uh that's the one thing I, I disagreed with Mike a minute ago he said the people weren't jumping on Archie at the start and a couple of people made the comment oh hell they weren't but he lost to Indiana State when he gave up like 90 points in that first game and people were like whoa what's going on here but I, I don't think that's what you're going to see you mentioned defense chronic I think you're going to see more defense than offense and a lot of offense that's created from the defense uh, which we heard we were going to see over the last couple of years, but have not I think that's going to become a reality. I, I certainly think so. You know, you look at for all the critics of the hire that talked about, you know, this is a guy that had no college experience uh, and kind of discounting the translation of NBA coaching to, to NCA coaching. Yeah. There's some pretty fundamental differences, but you know, at the end of the day, we watch NBA games and, you know, Yes, the shooting is is out of this world. Yes, the athleticism is out of this world. People forget what makes NBA players uh, able to ascend to that level of competition. It's all the above, but it's people like to discount or they forget doing the little things at the absolute highest level: cutting, passing, defending. Uh, I mean, this you don't get to that level unless you're really really good at all the small things and for a fan base that for years has pleaded for better fundamentals um i i think that kind of goes hand in hand with what mike woodson expects from this team uh as far as how they're able to compete and i think that's kind of at the heart of of this whole strategy is everybody's gonna have to be able to do all those little things at a really high level uh and do them consistently and once you cross that line where it's no longer uh, at, at you know meeting those expectations, there's going to be somebody waiting to come in and, and take your place there. And you know, I've heard a lot of people over the last several years that complained about why is he letting this guy continue to do that or the other. Well, part of it was just a, a product of 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 the roster. There's nobody else to come in and spell that guy. There's nobody else to come in and, and maybe create different matchups. Uh, and with the exception of Trace. There's not a lot of spots on this floor that don't have a lot of really competent, able people uh, who are going to be waiting in reserve to come in and and see if they can't raise the uh, the competitiveness a little bit. So I'm super excited for that. Um, you know, this is you talked about the culture of the program. Um, it, it's a really difficult one to measure, especially at this point in the season, because everybody had a great off season. Every locker room's as strong as it's ever been. Um, but you genuinely get the sense, uh, listening to the, the players talk, um, seeing them, you know, together off campus, uh, with pretty regular frequency here in town, this is, as, it, it certainly seems like this team is as, as tight as we have seen, especially for a team that's got, you know, effectively six new faces that'll be lacing up for the first time. Um, this seems like a group that, that they, they mean what they say when they say it's a great locker room right now. And we'll see how that, uh, you know, how those bonds stand up once they face some adversity. Uh, and even though the schedule is not going to be the most competitive here to start, um, you know, there's there's still guys who've worked really, really hard this whole offseason that want to get that payoff for it. Um, so seeing how the roster, you know, how the, uh, the rotations are managed and balanced, I, I think it's just going to be a really fun uh, couple of months here before it gets real serious. 
just to see how those guys progress and see what roles uh, they embrace. And uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of people surprised with uh, with perhaps how competitive Indiana can be here once Big Ten starts. Well, you look at the change, Kevin. There's, well, I don't know, four or five new faces on the roster. But three of those new faces are in the starting lineup. So there's a big, that's a big change right there with, with Parker Stewart, uh, Miller Cop, and Xavier starting the starting the starting five along with race and trace uh yeah. so there's a big change right off the bat you know yeah that doesn't surprise me because coaches are going to want to put their stamp on things and xavier johnson was brought in here uh because he's got some dynamic playmaking ability now the question is is he going to you know stay away from foul trouble is he going to be disciplined is he going to be that leader at point guard that you need and if not then you have rob finnessy right behind him and you even have christian lander who mike woodson was saying good things about his camp uh after he had that early uh, leg injury uh, in terms of uh, a guy that can, uh, you know, uh, be in the mix as well. Uh, so you've really, you really have three guys at the point. And if you remember Archie's last couple of years, you maybe only had one, two point guard in the roster in, in you know, uh, uh, Rob Finnessy. And then you had combo guys backing him up in uh, Devontae Green one year, Al Durham one year. Now you have three true point guards on this roster. Uh, which I think certainly will uh, bode well and help during the course of the season in terms of the ball handling um, and taking care of the basketball, making good decisions with basketball. And first, coaching, you've got three guys that have been the head coaches uh, on that on that on that uh, coaching lineup there with uh, Thad Mata in the background and Dane Fife and the, the NBA thing. I, I don't even talk about him not coaching in college. I don't think that that has any matter whatsoever i really don't i mean going from college to the nba okay yeah that's different that's just like going to a different level and it doesn't always work out but i don't think it's nearly the same coming back down uh to the college level and i, sh I don't mean down that far but it it's just not that different especially as the the, the game of basketball is kind of changing and becoming very similar in the nba and college it just the players in in, in the collegiate level are just not as good Chronic, still with us? I am. I just had a blip. Sorry about that. I missed the entire last thing you said. I'm so That's sorry. That's okay. Man. No, I was just talking about the, the people talk about the, would would he not having coached college? I'm like that is. I don't even talk about that. That is not even worth a discussion to me. Uh, you've got three guys that have been head coaches, and even one of them yes. uh, on that staff. And going from the NBA to college, I don't see. It's basketball at a high level. Your defense and offense and structure and this and that, and he knows what that is. So I don't care that he hasn't coached in college before. And the fact that Dane Fife is there and Thad Mata is there just adds to that. But it, that is so irrelevant. Uh, there's a difference between going to me from the NBA to college and from college to the NBA. Oh, no, you know, it's the analogy I've used quite a bit. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a uh, my, my physics professor uh, was part of a, a research team at UC Berkeley that I forget how many elements, like four or five or six elements on the periodic table. Like his team was was what put that on the board, literally. And, you know, here he is teaching high school physics. And, you know, at the end of the day, science is science. Uh, and while the audience may be different, it's not like his job is that much harder having to dumb it down uh, because he had the requisite communication skills, because he uh, he was a good communicator, because he was empathetic with, you know, perhaps the immaturity of, of high schoolers. And it, it was one of the most rewarding and informative classes I've ever had in my life, uh, because he was a guy that had all the knowledge in the world, literally in the world, uh, but also had a personality that allowed him to connect that knowledge with people who were in a totally different universe. Uh, as far as their understanding and their mastery of these concepts. Uh, at the end of the day, man, basketball is basketball. I don't care what what level, you know, you, you still want to get the ball in the hoop and you still want to stop the other team from doing the same. It, it's pretty, pretty basic. Uh, and you've got guys coming up now, and we say this every year, um, you know, they, they, the, the skill level that, that the high schoolers are showing up with when they reach college at this level, uh, the amount of training, the conditioning, everything that goes into getting to this point, you know, make no mistake. Yes, it's a different style of play, 
but you cannot argue that there's just not more available to these kids that they're not coming in uh, better equipped. Now, there's there's certainly some arguments on the other side of that from the fundamental standpoint that we've heard a lot about over the last eight years or so. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I would make the argument that this is a coach coming into it with that breadth of knowledge like like my physics professor. But he's got far, far more intelligent, more capable students uh, who are ready, willing and eager to learn from him. And, you know, the, the whole goal, the whole pitch is to get them to the ne- that next level. And as we've seen the game evolve, Indiana has kind of been stuck spinning its tires for the last several years trying to figure out how to compete in this new age. Uh, And really a program that didn't have much of an identity uh, for some time now. So I am am desperately welcoming uh, a return to Indiana basketball where you know when you turn the TV on, you know when you sit down in your seat in that gym, uh, what kind of style of basketball to expect. And at the end of the day, uh, I fully expect it to be highly competitive uh, on both ends of the floor. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I don't think you should maybe walk in there with the expectation we're going to put up one, 115 tonight and hold the other team to 38. Um, it's going to be a journey to get to that point. Uh, hopefully we arrive there. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a much more entertaining product on the floor. Uh, and above all else, I think it's going to be a product that Indiana fans are going to be proud to get behind again.